Great one, God. Amen. If you remember, we spoke uh, previous weeks about the sacrament of Eucharist. We spoke about the meaning of the sacrament. We spoke about the symbols we can find in the Old Testament concerning the Eucharist. We spoke about the institution of the sacrament by our Lord Jesus Christ. We spoke also about the practice of this sacrament in the first church. We spoke about the substance that we use in the Eucharist, the bread and the wine. And we spoke briefly about how we make them and how we prepare them and how we introduce them in the liturgy. Now, or today, let us talk briefly about an important concept concerning Eucharist. You notice that before, right before taking communion, right before taking communion, the deacons, or sorry, the deacon stand behind the altar. The deacon stand behind the altar, carrying a lefafa on the shape of triangle, and a candle, and a cross. We are not going to speak about what this symbolize. It needs another time. But we want to concentrate about what he's saying or what he is crying out in our ears. Especially the last part. What the deacon say in this uh, proclamation. Anybody remember from the deacon? Those who usually serve in the altar. At the end of the liturgy, before communion. Hmm. Anybody? The confession. Very good. The last part of the confession. Anybody remember the words? Hmm. Anybody remember the words? What the deacon usually say? In a loud voice. He is saying this statement. Pray for the worthy communion of the immaculate, heavenly, and holy mysteries. And then he ends with, Lord have mercy. What we want to know today, what is the meaning of worthy communion? Worthy communion. How to be ready, how to be worthy to receive communion. How to be worthy, me, the sinner. How to be worthy to receive this holy sacrament. Hmm. I need answers. How to be worthy to receive communion. You repent before taking communion. Okay. Anybody else? You fast before taking communion. Very good. Hmm. Anybody else? Hmm. Anything else? You pray before taking communion. Very nice. Huh. Anybody else? You read the prayer in the Akbaya before taking communion, huh? Confess. Hmm. You shouldn't be angry with anyone to receive communion, huh? All of this are nice. But the surprise is, yes. Attend the gospel, very important, huh? 
You have to be pure in, in your heart. Okay, all what you said, all what you said, and you're going to be saying, I agree with you, but unfortunately, nothing. All of these things that you do are not making you worthy of anything. Nothing. I'm still the sinful person. I'm still unworthy to receive communion. So what is the answer? How I'm going to be worthy to receive communion? The answer is in the liturgy. A small part, Abuna is praying right before that. Listen to it. Abuna is saying, Again, let us give thanks to the beneficent, our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, for He has made us worthy. He has made us worthy to stand in this holy place. And then continue to say, Let us also ask Him. Who? Who? Ask who? The Lord, God. Let us also ask Him to make us worthy of the communion and partaking of his divine and immortal mysteries. So please don't put in your mind that anything you do is making you worthy. No, it is God himself only who can make you worthy. Again, this concept has to be understood very well. All what you said before, it is important. But we're going to know what is it is important for. But it doesn't make you worthy. It makes you ready to be worthy. Let me repeat that. All the answers that we heard now from the deacons and the girls are very, very, very essential, very important to make me... Huh? Ready to receive the worthiness from God. Repeat again. Huh? All what we do is making us ready to receive worthiness from God. So I am not worthy. I will never be worthy until God himself make me worthy. So the question now, how should I be ready to receive this worthiness? To receive this worthiness. But before we, we, uh, we speak about this, let me ask you this question. What is the meaning of worthiness? What is the meaning of being worthy to receive communion? Hmm. Hmm? Deserve. Hmm. Receiving God's grace. Oh, I can accept this, yes. But deserving means I deserve? We just said, I'm not, I'm not worthy. I'm not deserving. Huh? Requirements. Hmm. Actually, the meaning of worthiness, I, I, I kept looking for the meaning of to be worthy to receive communion. And believe me, I, I'm speaking by myself, I couldn't find a deep meaning and a correct meaning except one of, uh, one of the bishops in, in Egypt, his name is Amba Mateus, and he wrote a lot about the liturgy. He defined worthiness with these words. Listen to it. Worthiness is the deep feeling of unworthiness. Again, Worthiness is the deep feeling that I'm not worthy. 
When you feel you are not worthy, this is the time you are to go and take communion. Worthiness is the deep feeling of unworthiness. The feeling of the person who proceeds to receive communion that he is a sinner. And really, the holies are for the holy. And I am not holy. And I didn't reach this stage or level of holiness yet. When I feel that deep inside, this is the time for me to go ahead and receive communion because I am not worthy. But He, God, make me worthy. So if God is the one who makes me worthy, and we said that we have to be ready to receive this worthiness from God, how I should be ready to receive worthiness? Actually, the answer, you all just said it now. But to make it clear, to be ready for receiving this worthiness, I have to be ready spiritually and physically. Spiritually and physically. What is the meaning of to be ready spiritually or spiritual readiness to receive the worthiness from God? Number one, spiritual readiness. Number one. Whoever will receive the Holy Communion has to be a Christian Orthodox. Whoever receive the Holy Communion in our church has to be a Christian Orthodox. That's why you find a Buna sometimes when somebody strange from the congregation comes to take communion, a Buna stop and ask him, where are you from? Do you have a father of confession? When is the last time you confess? All this question is not investigation. It's not interrogation. It is not to make him feel shame that he came. No, no, no. It is to make sure that he is a Christian Orthodox. Christian Orthodox doesn't mean that it is written in my paper that I'm a Christian. It means that I practice Christianity and I practice orthodoxy. Both. So number one, whoever will receive the Holy Communion has to be, huh? Christian Orthodox. Number two, he has to be believing in the sacrament. Let me try what they're doing, what they're receiving. No, 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 no. You have to believe in the sacrament and the vitality you have to believe in the vitality of Christ's blood in forgiving the sins sometimes they call abuna to give communion in, to a sick person in a hospital the first question abuna has to ask is is he alert or he is in coma why abuna suppose he's in coma he that's out of his hand. Give him communion. No. It's not supposed to be. Not to be harsh on the person, not to be hard on the person who is sick. But this is one of the requirements, as he said. One of the requirements to be ready, to be worthy, to receive communion. Is I have to be knowing what I'm taking, what I'm receiving. It is, not, it is not magic. It is not magic that we're going to give him a pill or a urbana and he's going to be awake. No, it's not magic. The person has to be aware of what he's receiving. So he, if he is in a coma or she is in a coma, we can't. Number three, he has to be practicing the sacrament of repentance and confession on a regular basis. Just, she said that now. But this is, doesn't make me worthy. It makes me ready to be worthy from God. Number four, he has 
to reconciliate. He has to be in reconciliation and peace with others. Who said that in here? Bish. I have to have peace with everyone. Remember, God Himself, our Lord Jesus Christ Himself, put this point clearly in the Bible. If you have your offering on the altar and your brother have anything against you, leave your offering. Go to your brother, make peace with him first, and then come. Very clear. I cannot take communion if I am not in peace with my brother and my sister. Not the physical brother and sister, with everyone. As much as I can. Number five, he is not supposed to come as if he's taking a mere usual food, but he has to realize in his heart the value and the greatness of the Lord's body and blood. The same point that we're speaking about. We have to realize what we are taking, what we are receiving. This is spiritually, to be ready spiritually. What about physical? I think you all know. We discussed this in the summer club, right? Whoever attend the summer club. Huh? If you remember, yeah. You have to fast. Very good. Huh? Anything else? Fast, old, also, okay. Huh? Very fasting. Huh? You have to pray. What is the meaning of pray? I can pray, uh, you know, uh, 11 o'clock in the morning because my house is just near the, the, the church. I can wake up, pray, Aban al and then come to take communion. Can I do that? So what is the meaning of praying? Speak to God from your heart. Yeah. yeah. Huh? No, I'm speaking about praying. Hmm. You have to be here before the gospel. Why? So what? I'm sorry to say. So what? Somebody will say that. I, I, I know that is very important, but so what? What is, the, what is the significance of hearing the word of God before taking communion? How do you know that? She say, the word of God cleanses you. How do you know that? The answer is in the Bible. The Lord himself said to the, the disciples, you are pure because of the words that I have spoken to you. So to be worthy and to be ready, I have to attend the reading of the gospel. This is cleanse me, cleanse my heart and cleanse my mind. And also attend the prayers. I cannot come from the door to the altar, taking communion, and go back. It's not the, it's not the, uh, take away. It's not, uh, you know, uh, drive through. No, it's not gonna. It's, it's it's impossible to be like that. So the people who used to do that, please stop doing this. You have to attend, at least. And, and, and I, I insist on the word at least, because you're supposed to attend from the beginning. Okay? But at least before the reading of the gospel. Otherwise, otherwise, consider yourself, you are not ready to receive the worthiness of having communion. It is not me. It is the law, the canon of the church. And we cannot discuss, uh, uh, give me a buna hell to come at the end. No, I can't. So, very nice to pray. But we are speaking about the physical readiness now. I have the, to, to have the cleanliness of my body and my cloth. My body and my cloth. You guys have to listen to that. My body has to be clean and my cloth has to be clean. 
Sometimes you find a young boy coming to take communion. But before coming to church, he had uh, a soccer game with his friends. So he is sweaty and he smell. That's not supposed to be. I have to be clean in body and cloth. I cannot come with unsuitable clothes to receive communion. That's why you find always Abuna is saying, please, no shorts. Because it's not respectable to the sacrament. I am going to meet God himself. When you are having an appointment or an interview for a job, you dress like, huh, single asher, as the, you're lucky, single asher. For the interview, what about God himself? Ah, oh, God, God is, you know, he loves me. He doesn't care. He doesn't care, but you have to care. You need it. He doesn't need it. So you need to be clean in body and clothes. Number two, to be fasting. And fasting means abstaining from food. Abstaining from food. Because fasting now, nowadays means I eat food before, before coming to liturgy. No, fasting means abstaining totally from food and drink. Desires and sins. Not good feeling. Everything. It's not abstaining from food only. Number three, the person has to be pure in mind and soul. And this is by, as we said, how to be pure in mind and soul and in heart. By listening the word of God. Listening to the word of God, which is the gospel. If you lack any of these spiritual readiness or physical readiness, consider yourself you are not ready to receive the worthiness from the Lord Jesus Christ to take communion. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.